Now let us come to the topic of, of packages. Now packages they are provided to avoid name conflicts between classes. Now we really what we when we design an application what we do is to group a particular type of classes in a different package then classes that belong to a different purpose in a different package. Just as we can see a class called date is available with two different uses. One is available in the util package which is for the purpose of date functions providing dates for as as per our dates and calendars and the second is provided in the SQL package which is used for the date data types. So these are two types of util uses that the date class has and two different type of functions that the class is designed to provide the functionality. So we have two different packages that we have designed. One is java.util and one is java.sql. So with the different package name we have the same class name but the clash has been avoided because of the package name. So we provide package names to classes to avoid their conflict of name and to give their name more uniqueness so that there is less clash of names. Now what exactly is a package is somewhat like a directory for the operating system. This means that if I say I have a package I have a directory say 1 so as per the Java rule this one directory can only contain a package which is 1. So within a directory say 1 we cannot have a package called 2 because then the system will never be able to find this package because it locates the package through the directory name. In case the package is 2 the system will look for a directory which is named 2 and it will never be able to locate such a directory and we will never be able to run our class. So whatever is the directory structure suppose I have a class a directory says 2 and then in that I have a directory called 1. So as per the directory structure we can have the package structure. I can have a package say 2 dot 1. So either I can have a package which is 1 or I can have a package which is corresponding to the directory structure which is 2.1. Now once I declare a class with a package, suppose I say I have created a class with a package 1 and the name of the class is A. So then the name of the class changes instead of A it becomes 1.A. So the identification of the class shall always be with the package name. So we will just see the practical implementation of packages. So instead of using Eclipse we will be using DOS in order to understand the more at the root level of how packages are working. So I will create a new directory say 1 and in that 1 I will create a new directory say 2. Now in this case let me make a class say my first. Just I'll expand this. So I'll open my class my first dot java. I'll say class my first and I'll create main public static wide main. So one way a, a simple class as we have earlier created I will say it is my first class. Now this is a class without a package. I will just run this off to see the output. So 
so this is running perfectly okay now I edit this file and add a package statement to this package my first so this is my first class with a package I'll compile the file now now when we compile the file there is no problem but when I run the file and I say java my first so this gives me an error that it says the file name class name is wrong now its real name is my first dot my first uh, sorry it is two dot my first oh, I have given a wrong package name sorry so very basic mistake we have made now in the directory called 2 we can only have a package which is 2 so I really apologize for the mistake java my first dot java and then when I run this class I say java my first the system says the wrong the name of the class is wrong because it is package name dot class name so it is 2 dot my first so I'll write java 2 dot my first so now it is not able to locate the class now this is because 2 dot my first means it is looking for a directory 2 and within the directory 2 it is looking for a class which is my first now whenever we run any class the system tries to locate the class within the at the current location now we are currently in the in the folder which is 2 we are currently the current location is directory true when we say java 2 dot my first system looks for a directory say 2 within the 2 directory itself which is not there so this is where the problem comes and it is not able to locate the class now if i go a step behind now i am my current directory is 1 Now this is the one directory and this is my current location. Now if I say java 2 dot my first I am looking for a directory say 2 in 1 which is there then I look for the class my first within 2 which is also there. So if I say 2 dot my first the class runs perfectly fine. So you can see how packages work and how we need to associate the package name with the class name and how we can run a class with a package name. Now what, what problem here that we have got is that it will run only from this location. If I try to run this from any other location, I cannot run it because the system will look for the two directory in the current location which is not available it is only available within the one directory so what do we do now now the second rule to run a class is either the system is able to locate the class in the current directory or the system looks for the class in the class path now class path is a variable which is set to default some default value that we'll just see when the system installs the jdk so now i'll set the class path now class path has to be set to a path where you will like the java runtime to locate to look for your classes so i'll add this percentage class path to append the existing class path so that the existing path also stays and i add my class path which is d1 so what i'm saying to the system is whenever it is not finding my class in the current directory it should look for my class in the one directory so if my class is 2 dot first it will look for 2 in the directory 1 and rest of the thing will, will follow the path so I have set the class path now I will again run the file it is running perfectly ok now I can run this from any location I wish to oh, it was running already from this location so I will try running from here java2 dot so once you have set the class path you can run your class from any location any drive on your system so this is how you can set your class path 
Now if you are setting your class path on the command prompt, this will only remain till the time your command prompt is there. As soon as you close your command prompt and open a new command prompt, you will not be able to run your classes as we are running right now. So if you are very sure of designing all your classes with the same package, suppose every class that I will design, if it belongs to the package 2, then I'll, I can even set my class path within the system variable that we had seen during the installation. I'll just uh, repeat that again. I can go to the system variables, environment variables and here as you can see there is no class path variable. So I can create a new, I can add variable name as class path, I can add a value here that is d colon 1. So I will just show you how I can set class path and then d colon 1. So this is how I can set my class path and then I need not set every time I open up a command prompt and it will run perfectly ok for me. So this is the first lecture on packages. We have seen the purpose of the packages is to give a better identification to the classes because we can have similar name classes. So to give identification to them we can have different package names associated to the classes and then we have seen that packages they are analogous to the directory structure. So whatever is the directory name it can contain only that package name or it can follow the structure of the directory. Now to show you the path for the directory structure I will again open up the file. Now instead of saying package 2 I will say it is 1.2. So I compile. Now if I run my class is 1.2.my first. Now it will not run because our path is d slash 1. So system will look for 1 within this package which it will not be able to find and the entire thing stops. So for my class to be found I need to set my path to one step behind this directory. So I will again edit the class path. I will not remove the earlier part, I will add another one which is d colon. So first system will check for one directory in this path, it will not find. Then it will go to this part, it will find, uh, try to find the one directory within the d. It will find the directory and my class will now run. Oh yeah. So this is what happens how you, how you can properly set the class path. And once you know the concept of the class path, you can set for any class. So in our next lecture, we will continue with further with packages.